If you're seeing this worksheet for the first time, your eye is probably drawn over to column M, where we see what are called check boxes, as well as some colored panels. I'm going to check the box for contract. And you can see what's happening in the data over in columns A through J. Every time we see the word contract in column D, uh, all of that row is highlighted. If I do the same for hourly, the hourly box, we see those highlighted. This is similar to a filter, except it's not hiding data. It's simply highlighting the data. So these checkboxes are associated with conditional formatting. As I uncheck the box for contract, you can see what's happening. So it's quickly obvious what is being done with these boxes and how they're being set up. But let's explore a little bit. I'll scroll to the right and uncheck a couple of the boxes. I'm going to make column M wider. And we see these words, true, false, false. Look what happens when I check the box for contract. Second of those entries became true. I'll uncheck the box for full time and half time. The top entry here is false. These boxes are associated with these three cells respectively. And over to the left, we can click within the data. If we go to the home tab and take a look at conditional formatting, we can observe the existing rules by managing the rules. This does not necessarily mean we're about to change them. Manage rules. We've got three rules set up, as you might imagine. And I'm going to click the blue one here and edit. Now, again, I will not be changing, but we'll simply look at this. So what we're doing, in effect, is showing what's being set up, and then we'll backtrack and show you how to do this. There's a formula here that says, in effect, if the column D entry for the moment, we're not seeing that in the background. The column D entry there is hourly. And if cell N3 happens to be true, then we'll make those cells be blue. Now, at the moment, it's not. So that's why we're not seeing any blue off to the left. So it's kind of hard sometimes to put the pieces together if we see existing rules. But let's, in effect, start over here. What I'm going to do is click within the data here and simply remove all conditional formatting. In fact, I didn't even have to click there necessarily because when you go to conditional formatting, you can clear the rules from the entire sheet. So no conditional formatting in effect right now. Clicking these check boxes does nothing. So how do we get to these check boxes? Where do they come from? It's what we call a form control. And what you'll need to use is the developer tab in the ribbon. And if it's not visible, as is the case right now on my screen, you'll need to make the developer tab present. Simply right-click any existing tab, customize the ribbon. And along the right side, you'll see a number of choices, including developer. Now, you might see more choices, additional choices than you're seeing right now on my screen. But check the box for developer, click OK. And now, on the developer tab, we have a section called controls and a button for insert. And there's a button there for checkbox. We also have something called a combo box. There's also over here, uh, we've got some other kinds of buttons off to the left here. When you slide over these, a pop-up tells you what it is. And some others, we're going to be using checkbox. So when I click checkbox and move the mouse around, it's essentially inviting me to put this somewhere. So I'll just put it right here. Now I'm going to need three of these. So as I drag one of these, I'll hold down the control key, drag it down to here, and then do that again to set up three of these. Obviously, the wording is going to be changed. We want to add color. What we do with these checkboxes is associate them with a cell. And with a checkbox, if you right-click it, you should get some choices here, including format control. So for the format control here, I want to link this to a cell. It could be any cell I want. I'm going to link it off to the right to this cell right here. That's N9. 3D shading helps a little bit for the visual on the box click OK, and you see that. If I click outside of here and then check the box, look what's happening off to the right as I uncheck it. So it's true or false. When it's checked, it's true. When it's unchecked, it's false. You don't see that until you click outside of the box here to make sure it's not selected. Now, I want to do the same thing here. So I'll right click in the next box and format control, 3D shading, cell length. This time, I'll put it in cell N11, and click OK. And then in the lower box, right-click, Format Control, 
3D shading cell link. I'll put this one right here in cell N13. If we want to add color, this one is currently selected. Notice that there's a format tab, a contextual tab available in the ribbon when a box is selected. Here's a shape fill, and I'll use a blue here, maybe a, a darker blue. For example, I'm setting up for hourly. The box above it, right click that, actually just click it. And there too, from the format tab up in the ribbon, shape fill, and this time I'll use a green, slightly different green than the other one. And then the third box, the one on top right here, hold down control and click this. And on the format tab, shape fill, a yellow. Slightly different kind of yellow. The wording, of course, is off, so I'll control click top box, take out the wording that says check box 12, and put in full time and half time. And click outside the box, control click the next box, and again, get rid of this and put in contract in this case. Click outside the box, control click the last box and we'll get rid of that text there. And I'll type in hourly. Now, in the interest of time, I'll only set up two of these, but just so we get the idea here. Keep in mind, even now, even though we're not ready to, and even now, although we don't have conditional formatting set up, you do see what's happening here as we check and uncheck the boxes. And anytime we need to change the format of the box, the color, or the sizing, be sure to hold down the control key as you click it. So I, this box, of course, needs to be made wider if we want that text to show, as we would something like that. Okay, now, the idea is we want to use conditional formatting, and we want, for example, cells to be highlighted in green whenever we see the word contract in column D, and when this entry over here in N11 is true. So, and for the moment, it's not. So, when those two conditions are true, when the word contract appears in column D, and the word true appears in N11, then we want those cells to be green. So in setting this up, be sure to select all of the data. Now, if you highlight the columns themselves, you, you also have the advantage of allowing for future entries in the list. In other words, if the list grows or shrinks, we will not have to redefine conditional formatting. So by selecting columns A through J, in effect, we're saying this list could grow to be over a million rows the conditional formatting will be in effect in all cases here. So as we go to conditional formatting, remember this is on the home tab, we jump immediately to a new rule. And that rule will be set up by way of a formula. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now at the moment, all the cells within the data that we're concerned about are selected. So what we want to be true, first of all, is that the column D entry, so I'm typing equal D1 equals, double quote, contract. Now, within double quotes. At all times, within our conditional formatting cells here, we're always looking into column D. So we want that to be an absolute reference. So instead of a D1, we want a dollar sign in front of this. You could be pressing the F4 key to apply this as well. Now, we want that to be true, but we also want something else to be true. We want to make sure that the cell that's associated with the contract checkbox is true. So scrolling off to the right a little bit, that's going to be cell N11. And we need two things to be true. So following our equal sign, we want the word and. It doesn't have to be capitalized, but I'm doing this here. I will display this larger in a moment on the screen so you can see it even better. So we need two things to be true for these cells to be green. We want to make sure that the entry in column D is always contract, comma, and the explicit entry in cell N11 is always true. Now, simply by indicating it here, by its very presence, that means it's true. If it were false, this would cause our test here to fail. That might seem a little strange if you've never used this construction before. When both of these are true, we want a particular format, and I'm simply going to use a fill of that green in the background. I'm going to highlight this formula and then paste it on the worksheet so we can see it more clearly. It's not hurtful, but you don't need to do that. So I'm pressing Control C as this is highlighted. So I'll click OK, click outside the data, and click the box for contract. And we see what's happened. Now, the formula that's in effect, and this is what I said suggested earlier, is not typically displayed here, but I will display it right here. 
that's the rule in place. And it applies for all the data in columns A through J. And again, in English, it's saying any time a cell is equal to the word contract, any time a cell in column D is equal to the word contract, and N11 is true, then apply the green format. So if I uncheck the box out here for contract, the word true will become false in this test it would fail. Now, in setting up the other rules, we don't have to go through all that retyping. We'll simply copy one of these. I'll only do the one for hourly, simply by dragging across here and going to conditional formatting and managing the rules. And here's the one rule we have in place. I'm going to edit this simply to copy it. So I'll highlight this, press Control C, OK, and create a new rule. Use a formula. I'll paste it in here, Control V. And this time, I'll make sure that the column D entry, instead of being contract, is going to be hourly. And instead of N11 being true, in this case, it will be N13. So when N13 is true, and that's an absolute address, and when the entry in column D is hourly, we want to apply the format of blue as a fill color. Now remember, you could use other kinds of formatting, border features, fonts, number formats. In this case, wouldn't apply, but certainly some of the others as well. Click OK and OK and OK. Click the box for hourly, and the hourly cells are blue. Green, contract, we see what's happening. I didn't paste the formula this time, but it looks almost like this, except we're seeing the word hourly instead of contract, and instead of N11, we're seeing N13. Now, eventually, you might want to move these around a little bit. Remember, if you want to move these and resize these, you hold down Control, click this, move it around, possibly making it larger, that sort of thing. You can do that as you prefer. Maybe make them that big as we saw earlier. So lots of different other techniques you might want to employ here to beef up the visuals. But the main idea here is we're using a checkbox. Remember, that's available off the developer tab, which you might need to make available. Insert, there's the checkbox, one of our form controls. And we combine that with the settings of conditional formatting to make this worksheet a lot more visual and as we are making presentations, for example, the data will jump out at us as we're making these choices.